Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to my YouTube channel and my very first editing breakdown video for you guys. This was highly requested, so I thought I'm gonna give it a try. So this is not a tutorial, this is just a editing breakdown of a edit I did and I'm gonna blend it in over there somewhere, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And without further ado, let's jump right into Photoshop. Let's go! So right now we're in Photoshop and we're gonna take a look at this picture I just edited. And you guys went crazy and wanted to know how I edited this one. So this is how I got from here to here. Alright, let's see what we've done in all these layers. So I usually don't really name my layers so this is gonna be a little bit catastrophic first of all i always start with the skin retouching so as you can see i did a lot of skin retouching here i'm using a method called dodge and burn and i have three curse layers here two for dodge and one for burn so why do i have two for dodge because i had some harsh shadows which i cannot really remove with the first dodge curve so I added another one because I was already maxed out on the one curve. As you can see, I just added another dodge layer and dodged those shadows away, which were too dark. And this is what I did for the contouring. And yeah, I, I don't go too detailed in this part because uh, retouching can be hard to understand, especially dodge and burn. So um, if you want to know more about it, let me know in the comments, guys. Okay, after the skin retouch, I just colored my whole image. And let's see what I've done here. So let me blend in the layer so you can see the after or the result of the coloring process. So this is before and this is after coloring. Let's disable all those layers here. So first of all, I just added a curse layer to add some contrast to the picture as I always do and this is how the curves look like it's actually a traditional S curve as you can see I just pulled down the shadows and raised up the highlights and just made a point in the middle for the midtones so nothing special actually and then I added another curves layer and played with the RGB here to add some blue tones in the shadows as you can see here I just raised up the curve a little bit on the shadow side so I get those blue tones in the shadows okay so now we move on to the selective color layers and this is the finishing result so let's disable all these layers again first of all I start with the overall layer where I actually just color grade signs and blues usually and maybe greens but we don't have any greens here so i just played with the signs adding some blues and also with the blues to add some more blues and signs together and this is the end result as you can see the blues are much more dominant now and a lot brighter okay so the next step is to exclude myself with a mask as you can see here so i hold down shift alt and left click on the layer mask so i can see my visible mask here if you wondered how that works and then usually i play with the reds and the yellow tones in this case we didn't have too much to play around the subject so i don't know yeah i just play with the reds down here on the wacom tablet as you can see this is the only thing actually changed but I wanted to make it more orangey. Alright, the next selective color layer is here where I painted in my arm because it was too yellowish in comparison with my skin. So I just masked that out and then I just colored it using reds and yellows as you can see here and then adding another hue and saturation layer because this was kind of too orange or too saturated so yeah this was the result and then I used a curse layer here with the mask where I masked out myself to decrease the contrast from the background and also darken the background so I stand out a little more in the scene and this is the after as you can see I just raised the shadows so I get less contrast in the background 
and usually I just add a two strip lot so my skin gets a little more on the pinkish or purple side because I like that peachy look but that's just me so next step is to exclude my eyes to make them <laughs> more white yeah this is <laughs> kind of funny but yeah it's part of the process um, it's not a lot but it makes a little difference and then I just merged all these layers together so we can actually disable those layers and uh, I converted this layer to a smart filter and then added a camera raw filter to it. To actually sharpen the image I just masked out my facial part and added some texture to it. Nothing really interesting or special, just the way I sharpen my images. So the next part is frequency separation because I was not really satisfied with the result I got here from dodging and burning especially in night portraits I sometimes use some frequency separation but not a lot so this is why I did it in post let's see what I've done here it's before and after so before and after just painted around here on my forehead because it was kinda dark the next the next step is to add some text to show you what I'm doing on my phone actually here on this shot because this was a more meaningful self-portrait so let's see what kind of text I've added here and this is the first text it says hey bro we are going out are you joining us tonight and it was read 25 minutes ago and then I just added a text reply which was now I'm fine gotta edit some photos today because I wanted to show you some relatability to this image because I think a lot of photographers are staying at home and editing pictures instead of going out but maybe that's just me but um, I hope you can relate to it as a photographer hopefully you're, you're looking at this as a photographer um, I think other people won't watch this video <laughs> so the next step is to add a um, I don't know why I called this Facebook logo it's actually Photoshop logo so I added this Photoshop logo from Google actually, from Wikipedia I guess. And it looks like this if it was finished. I can show you how it looks when I imported this image. And this was the Facebook logo. I changed the blending mode to screen. And yeah, I used the and yeah, I used the transform tool to morph it like that. So if you press Ctrl T, you can transform it. By holding down control you can uh, transform the image just like this so you can make it more 3d I changed the blending mode to screen to make it transparent as you can see so I duplicated this layer about three more times and added a Gaussian blur to it just like this and this is a Gaussian blur of about 40 pixels and the next one is on 280 and the last one is on 400 and the more Gaussian blur you add to it, the more glow you get. Then I just added a selective color layer to make the Photoshop colors match blues here or the teals because it was too blue. And what it looks like, just playing around with the signs and the blue channel again. And to finish up this look, I just added another light by hand. And this is how it looks like. This group actually contains a curves layer which adds the light and a levels adjustment layer to control the light if I move this around it gets brighter or less bright and then I added a color balance layer to match the colors of the light again because it was too blue so I added the color balance layer and then I just grouped all those adjustment layers together added a mask and just paint over with a brush over and over to get this look then I did the same with the Lightroom logo actually as you can see I just edited it like that, changed the color again using the selective color layer. Then I actually did a light copy for Lightroom also. I don't know why it's up here but yeah. And then I just added some particles to make it look cooler because usually if you light up your room or so or any room you will see some dust particles. So to emphasize the whole environment here yeah just a little bit and I also colored it using a selective color layer again 
just the side of a mound. And then my skin was kind of too yellowish on this side, so I decided to add another selective color layer to play around with the yellows and the reds. And this is the outcome. So I made it a little bit more orange, so you get that orange and teal look on my face here. Then I just added another curse layer again to make the whole environment a little bit darker than before because it was still kinda kinda bright for me and this is the result and this was actually it and yeah this is before and this is the after so yeah I hope this guide or breakdown was kinda helpful for you and I could provide you with some value I hope it was kinda understandable since this is my very first breakdown ever and yeah let me know in the comments what you think about it um, if you have any feedback or recommendations, I should do better for the next time. And yeah, since I have no outro, see you next time, guys.